Shalom. In our community, the Our Father or Lord's Prayer is known as the Abund Bishmaya, which is Jewish Aramaic for Our Father who is in heaven. It's taken from the opening words of the version of the prayer used by the Talmudi Jewish community. I decided to make this video because although you can find a lot of videos on YouTube of the Our Father in Syriac, that is, Syrian Aramaic, it's impossible to find anything on the original, original Our Father, that is, in Jewish Aramaic, the dialect that Jesus, or Yeshua, actually spoke. The difference between the two is like the difference between the English spoken in the deep south of the United States and the English spoken in Glasgow, Scotland. Which dialect did Yeshua speak? He was a Jew, not a Syrian. So it logically follows that he spoke Jewish Aramaic and not Syrian. What you can see in the image for this video is the prayer written in Jewish Aramaic with a Galilean accent. What I'm about to read is the prayer in standard Jewish Aramaic. Abund Bishmaya, Yit Kadeshmach, Titei Malchutach, Tiher Utach, Echmad Bishmaya, Ken Afber A, Lachman de Mer A, Hablan Yomade no Machra, Ushbaklan Chobain, Echmad Afshebaklan Lachai Bain, Ve Alta Elan and Isayuna, Elad Selan Min Bisha, Amin. Now this is what the prayer reads like in English. You'll find it very revealing in the way it solves some odd lines in the traditional rendering of the prayer in English. Our Father who is in heaven, sanctified be your name. May your kingdom come, may your will be done, just as it is in heaven, so also upon the earth. Our bread which is from the earth, give us day by day and forgive us our sins, just as we should forgive our debtors. And do not bring us to trial, rather deliver us from evil. This is basically the version of the prayer used by our community. It differs slightly from the Christian version, especially in the second half of the prayer. Whereas the Christian version says, Give us this day our daily bread, the Jewish Aramaic version reads, Our bread which is from the earth, give us day by day. It's thought that this difference came about because of a possible mistranslation in Koine Greek of just one word of the Jewish Aramaic prayer when written in the Galilean dialect, hence the image for this video. It's theorized that the word, the Mer'ah, meaning which is from the earth, was possibly misread by the Gospel writers as the Ma'ra of the morrow. The early Christian commentator Jerome, in his commentary on Matthew, he quotes the Gospel of the Hebrews and writes that in the so-called Gospel of the Hebrews, for super-substantial bread, one finds the Hebrew Machar, which translates as of the morrow. The difference in the Aramaic is a switching round of just two letters in the Aramaic word, the ayn with the resh. Whereas the Galilean Aramaic version has la'aman de mer'ah, our bread which is from the earth, the evangelists seem to have misread the two words as la'aman de mar'ah, our daily bread or our bread of the morrow. It might even have been that the copy of the manuscript they used actually contained the scribal error in the original Aramaic in the first place. It could easily have been done by a scribe who wasn't paying attention to what he was writing, since the Aramaic for give us each day literally reads give us today and tomorrow, hence the seeming appearance of the word morrow twice. If we consider the Jewish Aramaic version of the prayer, it also clears up the uncomfortable implications of the line and lead us not into temptation. The English word temptation 
is a translation of the Koine Greek word perasmon, which in turn is a translation of the Jewish Aramaic word nisayuna. While this can mean temptation, it also means trial, that is, of the legal kind in a court of law. The Jewish Aramaic version of the same line therefore reads in English, and do not bring us to trial. So rather than an image of asking God not to tempt us, the Jewish Aramaic version presents an image of us asking God not to put us on trial for our sins. It continues the court of justice imagery with the line, deliver us from evil. Now, in presenting one's, qu one's case in a court of law, one would have cried out to the judge, deliver me from my accuser. It may even have been that the original prayer spoken by Yeshua ended with, deliver us from the accuser. You see, in Israelite theology, Satan was not the ruler of all evil, or the prince of darkness, but an angel of God, obedient to God, and subservient to him. His job was to act as a kind of counsel for the prosecution, the accuser. Our sins would be examined at the end of our lives, and the angel Satan was there to present our sins before God, hence the courtroom imagery. In a Gentile environment, Gentiles would not have been aware of who or what Satan was, so it's possible that the accuser got changed, inaccurately, first to the evil one, and then simply to evil. The Abund Bishmaya does not end with the line, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. This was a Christian addition to the prayer in the second century, inserted by Christian copyists, who were probably uncomfortable with the prayer ending with the word evil. It was probably taken from the prayer of King David, found in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. So the Jewish Aramaic version of the prayer results almost in a psalm with two verses, each with six lines. The first line of the first verse, Our Father who is in heaven, is contrasted in the second verse by its first line, Our Bread which is from the earth. So, Our Father who is in heaven, and Our Bread which is from the earth. These two verses reflect the ancient Jewish division of religion into things which deal with piety, that is, things which concern the human relationship with God, and things which deal with justice, that is, things which concern the human relationship with one's fellow human beings in the material world. To summarize the prayer, the prayer addresses God, our Heavenly Father. It hopes for his name to be sanctified. We sanctify the name of God by living a good, ethical and moral life and by doing good works. It hopes for God's kingdom to come, that is, for it to be fulfilled. God's kingdom is here and now, but one day, when all humanity follows his righteous ways, the veil between heaven and earth will be torn away, and there will be a heaven on earth, that is, the fulfilment of God's present kingdom, when his will will be done perfectly on earth, just as it is in heaven. The second verse deals with our daily needs, and asks God to provide for us continually, day by day, and to forgive our sins just as we should forgive our debtors. This is a play on words in Aramaic, since the word for sin, choba, is the same as the word for debt. So just as we should forgive those who sin against us, we should also forgive our debtors, just as God forgives our sins. The prayer then pleads with God not to put us on trial for our sins, but rather to deliver us from our accuser. I'd like to finish by repeating the prayer first in Jewish Aramaic and then in English. Abund bishmaya, yit kadeshmach, titei malchutach, tiher utach, hechmad bishmaya, ken af be'ar'ah. 
lachman de meer a hablan yo made no magra ushbaklan khobain ehmad afshbaklan lkhaybain ve al ta'ilan lisayuna ila atselan min bisha our father who is in heaven sanctified be your name may your kingdom come may your will be done just as it is in heaven so also upon the earth our bread which is from the earth give us day by day and forgive us our sins just as we should forgive our debtors and do not bring us to trial rather deliver us from evil shalom and thank you for listening